So watch this. Proverbs 12, verse 11. Okay? I'm going to get into the mind of the demented soul who believe that they are a covering to someone. All right? So Proverbs chapter 12, verse 11. It says, He that tilleth the land shall be satisfied with bread. All right? And all that simply means is that anyone who who uh, steward properly over their resources will always have a good outcome or they'll have resources uh, readily available whenever they need it in, in, in layman's terms. But it's the second part I want to get to. Listen. But he, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. Boy, boy, we about to unpack this. Now this, this, I don't usually do this, but I can make an exception today. Every last piece of teaching skill that I possess, I'm about to pull out right now. Some I haven't used in a while. I about to yank every piece out because I about to drill this point straight into your cerebral cortex today. All right? Let's read the second part again. It says, but he, a person that followeth vain, sorry, he, but he that followeth vain person is void of understanding. Now let's define the word vain. When a person is labeled as vain, what does it mean? Well, I wrote the definition right here. Listen to this, vain. The word vain, having or showing an excessive high opinion of one's appearance, ability, or worth. In other words, I'm your covering. Yes, and you must be accountable to me. It's not in scripture and it doesn't have to be there because my group of clowns, we came up together and they have ordained me the great one. And now I'm executing, extending my powers to everybody in my kingdom who is leader. And now you must submit to them, but you all submit to me. You see why I call them joke? J-O-K-E with a capital J. Huh? A big clown. A big circus freak. I came to offend. I hope you mad. I just hope you upset. I just hope you upset with me right now. I hope so. Because if you are not upset with me, I would have felt as if I fail on my assignment today. I hope you upset. A big clown. A big clown. Let's look at the word vain again. The word vain, having or showing an excessive high opinion of one's own appearance, their own abilities, or their own worth. They couldn't wait for someone else to say, man, I think you look nice, or you're an intelligent man. No, 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 I ain't got time for you. This is what I, I have concluded. I don't need a college to tell me this. I'm not even going to go to college. I'm going to just sit down one day and come up with an idea that I'm going to run a church and that everybody must bow to me. Vain. But let's go a little bit further now. We would have defined the word vain. So Proverbs 12, verse 11, B, it says, but he that followeth vain persons, not cases again, this person who's following them, such as you who are following these so-called people you're accountable to, which is one of many definitions of their uh, word uh, covering or phrase covering, it says, but he that followeth after vain person, that this person is void of understanding. Now let's break it down, okay? The word void, means to be lacking or depleted or not having, okay? But void of what? Understanding. Now, what is understanding? Well, the word understanding means to comprehend. In layman's term, it means to, to figure out how something operates. For example, if I say to you, I understand Deidre very well. What I'm really saying to you, I understand who she is as a person, her habits, her traits, because I'm, I'm with her, I'm married to her, I see her every day. So that means I understand. Others may not understand her because they don't have, they don't have the whatever, they don't have the knowledge to figure out who and what she's all about. But me being exposed to this all the time, I understand her. The scripture is saying here, those that follow after vain persons is void of understanding. In other words, they say it's basically warning them. You have no idea what you're getting yourself involved in. You, 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 you are depleted of the knowledge that had you had that, you would never be following this fool telling you that they are their cover. You are the, they, they are your covering. You would have never done that. So the Bible says, they that follow after vain persons. Jesus Christ have already established his, 
his structure and his order in his kingdom as well on earth. And he said in the book of Corinthians, I am the head. In other words, I cover all man. He says, I am the head. And in the far as the family structure is concerned, I put the man as the head. In terms of the family, but I got as the head of all. I, Jesus, I'm the head of all of you. I put the man in place as structure. I don't care who call themselves with what, what pronoun or what. The male is the head, and under him is his wife or the woman. So, what does this mean? Let me show you how much these nut cases go against the word of God. All right. So, according to the demented doctrine of covering, right? I as you would know, married to Deidre Ewing. Deidre Ewing is my wife. So they're saying now, because according to God, Kevin, Deidre's covering is you. Well documented in scripture. But what they're saying is that, no, 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 no. Her, her covering is her pastor. Even though she's married to Kevin. A whole, now look here, don't make, now look here. Well, excuse me? Yeah. You see, that's the, the that's that's the psycho that's the psycho part part of this doctrine, devil gospel. They're saying to you, no matter what goes on, I'm your covering. They're also telling, listen, listen. They're also telling the single ladies, well, you know, you need a covering, and I mean, you need a pastor. Let me see if I read this again. Let me look at the structure. Jesus starts off by saying. I am the head of the church, meaning that if this woman isn't married, the only covering other than her husband is me, Jesus Christ. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Dear Christian, if someone leaves your church and your pastor or leadership implies, or directly says, but that's a lot rarer, that you shouldn't be friends with a person or their family since they've stepped out of the church's covering, or it's implied that if you do so, that you'll face repercussions, run, do not walk away. Get away from that kind of leadership as quickly as you can that is manipulative territorial behavior and it has nothing to do with the spirit of christ let me say it loud and clear you can be friends with people who leave your church on good terms bad terms or no terms your pastor doesn't get to tell you who your friends are or judge you or punish you because of them that's not the loving, giving, gracious spirit of Jesus, nor is it the heart of community. And if someone is out of the spiritual covering of the church, it's okay. Because believe it or not, the way that a number of churches use spiritual covering today, that's not in the Bible. And too often, it's used for spiritual abuse and manipulation. Here's the story, Morning Glory. According to Romans 3.29 and Matthew 12.36, each person is ultimately accountable only to God, not to any other person or organization. Sure, it's smart to consult with others for guidance. I mean, that's Proverbs eleven fourteen, And Proverbs 5, 11 through 14 states, it's good to be humble and learn from the wisdom of others. And yes, leaders are charged with responsibility for those within their guidance. But that doesn't mean that authority ends with your pastor or leadership. Because you know what? There's stuff they don't know nor have experience in. Many pastors have no real clue or formal training about things like mental health or medical interventions. Yet we still have people in the church system being shamed for needing help in these departments or being met with disapproval when they seek guidance outside the church structure. But guess what? Our approval as believers comes from God, not mankind. That's 2 Timothy 2.15. No one person or group has the absolute right to declare any portion, not one single portion, of your or anyone else's love and service to God, valid or invalid, according to Romans 14.4. And when someone leaves your congregation, guess what? Jesus loves them just as much as he did before they left. Jesus, in fact, speaks against excessive earthly authority in Matthew 20, 25 through 28. It doesn't mean leaders don't have authority. They do, as long as it's as a true servant of a loving and forgiving God. But all too often, the idea of a church's spiritual covering, which is a fairly recent thing, by the way, that only became popular during the shepherding movement of the 1970s and 80s, and has bled over to many other church systems since then, is actually used for authoritarian structures, the cover-up of abuse, and let's be honest, cult-like intimidation. Like when a leader says, 
you can't hang out with this person or participate in this event because they aren't part of our church's covering. That's control. And well, I'm just going to call it what it is. It's spiritual abuse. It's manipulation. And that's not Jesus. And you don't have to take it. You can be friends with people who leave your church. You can be friends with people who leave the faith. Trust me, they may need you now more than ever, but don't ever let leadership tell you who you can and can't be friends with. It's a church, not a gang. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, which includes the freedom to be who God created you to be and for others to be who God created them to be. And the freedom to get outside of the restrictions any organization tries to force on you. Your friends need you. Don't let them down. And